Happy, happy meeting again. God bless this Dr. L. Very from from where? From where? I'm in yes. New York. Yes. Yes, of course. I, I was I was thinking whether I should say from Ireland or whether I should say from UK. I'm a human being. Hold on a second. Yeah. So, uh, Monica, you there? Yes, I'm good. I'm here. I'm mostly a human being. That's I've given up all this other stuff. It's all nonsense. <laughs> okay. So, good morning and a very warm welcome. Uh, upper, uh, would you like to start the recording? Uh, Uncle, I've started. Monica? Yes, yeah. I've started the recording. So, very warm welcome to my dear brother Alan Wary on the second episode of his interview with me. And here we are talking about. What are we talking about, Ellen? Can you give us a. Um, I was brief? hoping you would enlighten me on that subject. Okay. So. Uh, about? It's a. Uh, I told you last time we spoke, uh, yes. I remember with great fondness staying in your family home in New Delhi. And uh, the kindness and love that was shown to me, a complete stranger, was something I'll never forget. I particularly remember your lovely father and the things that he told me. And in fact, uh, these are things that I've used myself over the years. For example, I was in South Africa and I was traveling with one of their traveling salesmen who was Portuguese. I had known him before uh, because he was running a book wholesaling business in Portugal. And I told him about Sahaja Yoga and he said, well, you see, I don't understand why do we have to come on this earth in order to spiritually ascend? Why can't we ascend in spirit where the spirits are? And I had no idea how to answer this question, so I asked your dad. And your dad said, cricket is played, it's a game played by 11 players. Why not 9 or 15? There are 22 yards between the stumps. Why not 19 or 37? Why are there three stumps, not one or five? He said, because that's the way it is. So he said, just tell your Portuguese friend, that's the way it is. And another thing he told me was, he once uh, was called upon to give a talk at the, uh, I forget the Rotary Club of New Delhi. Yeah. Yes. He had prepared nothing. So he stood up and began giving a talk, talking about the qualities of the Muladhara, then the Swadistan, etc. And people loved his talk. And I think I told you, some mm. years later, quite a few years later, I was at my desk and the phone rang. A guy I knew who ran the biggest bookshop group in England said, we have a conference uh, and tonight's speaker has cried off at the last minute. We don't have anybody. So can you come and talk? And I said, no, not really. I don't do that stuff anymore. And he said, well, look, I'm, I'm desperate. Please, please, will you come? I said, no. He said, I'll give you 500 pounds. I said, no, no, it's not a question of money. He said, I'll give you a thousand pounds. I said, mm -hmm. I'll see you tonight. So I drove like down to Swindon. It's quite a long way from London. And we had the dinner. Very nice. There was 40 senior executives there. And my friend, at, as we were drinking coffee, said, where's your speech? And I said, well, it's up here. He said, you're joking. You're going to take a thousand pounds off us and you don't know what you're going to say? I said, yeah. He said, it better be good. So in short, I gave the same talk that Dr. Talvar had given all those years ago in Delhi. And people loved it. People thought it was astonishing. 
needless to say, I gave the thousand pounds to Sahaja Yoga because, you know, I didn't want to be making money out of Sahaja Yoga. But you can see from those two stories the fondness in which I hold in your entire family, actually. Thank you. Thank you. And I did tell you, I think, when you mentioned this earlier to me, that dad used to be guided by Sri Mataji directly on how to speak and what to speak on the stage. He was totally new, but he had this gift to speak so well in Rotary and in other forums that Sri Mataji used him quite uh, extensively to speak in her before she would start her speech at the public programs. And his explanation of everything used to be so perfect. I remember that Shimadaji used to come to the stage and it was, she, she said, I don't have to speak much. I can just go straight to self-realization. So those were the days. You know, he told me that as a young man, as an intern, he'd worked in Dublin. He and your mother had lived there for a time. Yes. I, of course, am from the north. It's like there's a barrier, a border between the two. But the thing that your dad could do, he could touch the, co the common humanity in every person. And, of course, that's the great thing that Sri Mataji, the gift that she gave all of us. Yes. But some use it better than others. True. I saw that... Uh, in his last days, which is this year itself, uh, he was bedridden for almost a year and a half. He didn't move an inch in his last few months. But when he lay down straight on the bed, he used to look, gaze up with a very, uh, a very serene look on his face. And he could hear, he could talk, he could do, he could converse but he couldn't move a limb. And uh, I asked him, I said, you look so peaceful. Do you think you have attained your ultimate goal of life? And he just nodded with his head down with a very beautiful smile on his face. Mm -hmm. And I really felt that mother had blessed him that in his last days, he went away so peacefully. He went away in front of me. He breathed his last. And it was such a peaceful way that he went. And I said, that's such a blessing for a man who gave up so many years of his life in, in, in giving realization to people across India. And he traveled all over the world with Shri Mataji. Mm -hmm. he, I felt he was so blessed. Uh, and, and it's such a beautiful feeling about him I have, even till now, that how much are we blessed even when we are about to quit? You know, uh, this, this takes me to one question which I had in mind for you. I was very quite close to Gregoire because um, he, was, uh, he was the one figure I know in Sahaja Yoga who everybody used to talk about and Sri Mataji would always say about him, that he was there from the early 70s. And then he wrote these books, these wonderful books. And then I came to know that he, you and he were quite close. And then thereafter, uh, my, my interactions with, with him were very limited because I used to sing. So at most forums, when Sri Mataji would introduce me and take me over to the other part of the world, he used to be there many times. And he used to always, uh, we, we, we had a lot of friendly exchanges and, uh, you know, very beautiful moments that we had together. But we were not in touch with each other for uh, long durations. Uh, I mean, there used to be very long gaps where we would never meet Gregoire in these years, in these past years. And then um, I suddenly lost him because we, I just came to know he, he is no more. And uh, I couldn't come to terms with the fact that being uh, such an active, wonderful child of Sri Mataji at the age of 65. Am mm -hmm. I right? He left us. Something like that. He no, left I'm, us because of his illness. When, when our work is done, when yeah. we've achieved what we came on this earth to achieve, then maybe um, that's 
the divine sees that that's, that's the end. And, you know, we, we can't understand any of this. I knew a woman in South Africa. Um, she was a published poet. And uh, before she came to Sahaja Yoga, she had cancer. And when she came, the cancer went away. But in time, it came back again. I'll tell you a funny story. I asked Sri Mataji in London to vibrate a bottle of water for her. And Sri Mataji did. So I sent it to South Africa. But then my secretary had a phone call asking, why is your boss sending a bottle of water to South Africa by courier? It's going to cost like 50 pounds. So she came in and asked me, and I had to think quickly of an answer. But you know, this woman said to me, Look, I know it's better for me to go now and to come back in a, in a fresh body. So that's, that's what is going to happen. So she understood. Now, for Gregoire, he, I would go so far as to say that outside normal human beings, he was probably the most extraordinary human being I ever met. You know, little boys in the West, they want to grow up to be astronauts or train drivers or something like this. Gregoire used to think he wishes he could be Alexander the Great. Well, that really says a lot about him, even as a boy. Mm. But, you know, you know this, what happened. He was in California. He met Raja Shah, who told him about Sri Mataji. Gregoire took a plane from California to the UK, and then a train down to Hurst Green, where Sri Mataji was living, some way outside London, knocked on the door, and she brought him in. And when Sir C.P. returned from his day's work at the International Maritime Organization, he was concerned to find a complete stranger in his pajamas in his living room. And Sri Maharaji kept Gregoire there for a couple of weeks. Well, how many people do you know who would do that? But at the same time, you see, he had this tremendous in intellect, but also tremendous humility. Mm. You know, it's always interesting people in Sahaja Yoga will get attacked. And I can tell you, I've seen worse behavior in Sahaja Yoga than I ever saw outside Sahaja Yoga. Yeah. And why is that? Well, I'm digressing, but I think it's important. Gregoire told me that on the 4th of May, Mm. 1970, Sri Maharaji went to hear Rajneesh speak. And she saw that he had figured out how to do something that no Rakshasa had ever figured out before. He'd, he'd worked out how to get into the chakras of human beings where the deities couldn't get in to attack and kill him. And we know that she said, had she not opened the Sahasrara when she did, that Sadashiva would have destroyed the universe the next day. So it was clear that Sri Maharaji opened the Sahasrara to make it possible for en masse realization with the full knowledge that many people weren't capable of taking advantage of it. But she had to take the chance that, mm -hmm. that they might. And so that's why, you know, it, it, I used to wonder, why, why, do Sahaj, why does Sahaja Yoga let some crazy people in? Because cults have a very good way of determining the lunatics. And they don't let them in because they don't want the trouble. 
But we welcome anybody, no matter how poor their spiritual seeking was in the past. And, and sometimes they, they turn into living saints. So that's why you see bad behavior in Sahaja Yoga. And I guess you also see bad behavior sometimes because people want power. Now, anybody who wants power is looking for it in the wrong place. And Uncle, we've really um, enjoyed your meditations as well. Um, the meditation for beginners that you've been um, posting online on Facebook. Good. Well, you know, th there's a problem. One of the problems that I walk into is that on Facebook, you're only allowed up to 250 people. Mm -hmm. Once you go beyond that, you can't see who's meditating with you and who's not. And so lots of Sahaja Yogis want to join, but I, they don't want to join in order to participate in the meditation. They just want to join because they want to join. So that's a bit of a problem. But, you know, it's, there are places where we have some success and places where we have no success. I mean, that's typical of, of our efforts in general. What, what concerned me was Gregoire gave his, his entire life, I would say, his youth to Sahaja Yoga and spreading it and uh, working for it. And he wrote so many books. And he was, uh, he was known as a very tall figure amongst all of us. We all respect him. We revere him. He and his brother Arno. Um, what I felt was the kind of end that he met and the kind of criticism that he met in the last days of his life. Um, I it just I just I just bleed for bleed for a soul like Gregoire. Why is it that is is it the same kind of thing that Mother used to talk about when the Incarnations had to suffer, or the the good people have to suffer for the for the work they do for the Lord for God. Uh, I feel Gregoire was a great soul, but uh, when I was visiting in 2017 uh, or 18, I was visiting Cabela. I I'm, I happened to be in Switzerland, and that is the place where Gregoire used to live, and few of his colleagues, they were very sad about the way things went in these last years of Gregoire's life. And I, it's really, uh, it concerns me. I want to understand how does this work? I mean, Srimadaji used to talk about the freedom, that it's, it's an open door that everybody and anybody can walk in and, and into Sahaja Yoga. But frankly, what I have understood from my life and, and those times that I spent with Srimadaji, she always used to say that I have opened the doors for everybody. But how many of them actually are Sahaja Yogis is the point to be known is that she used to tell me in that big crowd when I would stand with her, she said not even 10%. Because I've opened the doors to everybody. Anybody can walk in. And among you, I just need a thousand on my Sahasra. And I know my work is done. Now, okay. I give you a chance to speak on this. Well, she said that she reunified Germany, East and West, with just a few yogis. She talked about a change that she brought about in Hungary at that time through one man who wasn't a particularly strong yogi. Um, so we know that she worked through us. And for example, I recall that in Pune, there was a big public program in a soccer stadium. And she told the English leader, look, I want you to bring all the yogis with you because I need to work through them to give realization to so many people. Um, we should ask ourselves the question, I'm a Sahaja Yogi. What are my responsibilities? Now, it seems to me that one responsibility is to spread Sahaja Yoga. 
obviously many people become Sahaja Yogis and then they do it at home with their families. Very nice. Mm. Where's the spreading of Sahaja Yoga? One requirement is that we introspect. But that doesn't mean what introspect normally means. Normally it means asking myself questions. Why did I say that to my lovely brother Sanjay? What, what was I thinking of when I say that? There's a nice left the shooty guilt trip. So that analytical approach to introspection, which is how most people think of it, isn't what Sri Maharaji was talking about. She was talking about introspect and introspection in thoughtless awareness. That's a different proposition. But for those of us who have experienced that, that's something else. Because that's something that enables us to change our behavior. And she also said in one of her last talks, you should sit in groups of three or four and check the vibrations. Is each one in the group capable of becoming a guru? So becoming a guru is a key thing. I wonder how many did it. I did it in Russia. And the four of us, uh, the answer was vibrationally, yet yeah, we could all become gurus. Well, that's a long time ago. Have I become a guru? I wouldn't say so. I'm conscious of things that I have to overcome on the path to that. And of course, the whole thing is that one Sahaj journey is that of becoming. There's no destination that I'm aware of, except maybe in that talk before Sahasrara Puja in Austria, I think in 1985, she said, look, the bad news guys is you have to get to Nirvikalpa in this lifetime. Mm. Am I in Nirvikalpa? I don't know. I don't think so. But at least that all gives me a reason to get out of bed every day to do those four things. And if I try to do those four things, then I'm not worried about who said what to whom, what guy did this, what guy. It's frankly irrelevant. And you know, if there's one single lesson that I learned in my time in Sahaja Yoga, it's to be in the witness state. And this isn't to allow oneself to have no part in what's going on. In fact, the opposite is true. Because in the witness state, the deities work through us and are able to. So for example, if somebody does us harm and we don't forgive, Sri Krishna sort of says, carry on guys, enjoy yourself. On the other hand, if you genuinely and truly forgive, Sri Krishna acts. So this witness state is so critical and it's so hard to learn and so hard to practice. I don't, I remember, I, I have one uh, small experience. Of, a little bit, I'll go back on this issue of Srimadhaji giving freedom. I was sitting with her in Kabela at her feet and uh, <clears throat> she looked at me and she said, there are a lot of people complaining about you. Then she was laughing and she says, you sing so well. You've done so well with your, with your songs. And then these people, you know what, she laughed. She said, they are so jealous of you that they come and complain. And do they think that I am so naive? And would they, they would think that I believe them? And you know, I was sitting at her feet because I had so many complaints about a lot of people troubling me for something or the other regarding what I would do with my music or, or me as, as such. 
and uh, there was a lot of skirmishes happening with a lot of people. I will not take names because many of them are not here now. In my life, they were creating a lot of havoc. And I was at Shimadaji's feet. And then Shimadaji said, why are you feeling so troubled? Why are you so upset? When I have told you that you are safe, that you are protected. And the other thing is, she said, you must learn to forgive. And if you don't forgive, if you hold this in your heart, anything against anybody, then my hands are tied. In your freedom, you are holding on to your problems and you're not allowing me also to help you. And that was a real thing I learned from her because then after that, she told me, would you like to look out of the window? And we were sitting just there where out of the window, you could see the church of Cabela, the beautiful mountains in the sky. And she said, just look out and see how beautiful it is. And now, can you even feel bad about anything that's happened in your life when you're looking outside? And I'm looking there and I'm saying, mother, I am now in complete peace with myself. I'm not at all disturbed. And she said, you know what? When people become jealous because the others are doing so well, the biggest mistake they are doing is that they are trying to harm these people who are doing well. And they have not learned how to appreciate that they should be appreciative of what you have done. And instead of that, they are complaining against you, trying to pull your leg. So she says, that is the problem, their problem. And so when you're feeling bad about it, when they are harming you or they are troubling you, you are actually cat catching on to that reaction of yours that they are hurting you. But actually, you are holding on to something. Just let it go. And she says, the minute you let it go, I take over. Otherwise, my hands are tied to human beings. I cannot correct them. This is what I learned. Okay. At her. You know, all my life I've been in trouble. Right from when I was a small boy in Ireland. It's just one thing after another. I, I was an only child. I remember my father once said to me, can you tell me the name of a boy in this area that you haven't had a fist fight with? And I couldn't. Well, this was true of my life. I remember once lying in bed with my wife and I was on a conference call and what was being said was really, really shocking. And I was laughing. And my wife said, why are you laughing? And you know, the answer was, I know this process very well. I know how I could feel right now with this being said. I know how I will feel in a month, in six months, in a year. And with that perspective, I can see that it doesn't matter. So th that was the sort of sense of the witness state coming. And, you know, one should never lose sight of the fact, and we do all the time. She didn't come just as Adi Shakti, she came as Mahamaya. You know, I heard a talk last week where she was saying, you know, I will say to somebody, it's seven o'clock at night. Well, it isn't. It's the morning time. And she said, why do you think I said this to this person? To see how they would react. I know what the time is. But I want to see how they react. And if they react by telling me what the actual time is, that's really not the way to go. And I think I told you, she once, I always wanted to ask her about Ireland. Why did she not go there? 
She lived 16 years in England. She visited every country in Europe. Why not the center heart? I never got the chance to ask. But once in Russia, she spoke to me for a couple of hours. And she said to me, what are the Irish like? Stop me if I've told you this. I think I have. And I didn't know what to say, you know. What I tell you, they, they beat their wives, they drink alcohol to excess, they abuse their children, and they like putting, throwing bombs at each other in pubs. Is that what I'm going to say? I, I, I'm talking to the Adi Shakti. How do I speak to her? I said, well, individually, they're very nice people. I collectively, that's where the problems are. She said, no, no, you're quite wrong. Individually, they're very nice people. Collectively, they're also very nice people. So I just smiled and yeah. shut up. But I think I mentioned to you, yeah. years later, I checked. And the Good Friday Agreement, which brought an end to 30 years of war in the north of Ireland, came about some months later. Now look, she might have spoken to hundreds of people. She might have spoken to just me. There's no way of knowing. But there's no question in my mind that when she's talking about that they're all very nice people, she's enlisting the ganas and the deities to bring about what she, the Adi Shakti, is saying. So, you know, it's, it's easy to be confused by what she says. I'll tell you another incident, if you like. Sure. And again, please stop me. I can't remember what I said to you last time. While I think I did say this, I was at a soccer stadium. Sri Mataji gave realization to 4,000 people. Did I tell you this? When I got back uh, to the, we we're all standing. I did say this, didn't I? I don't remember. Okay. No. We we're all standing with our hands out, taking vibrations as Sri Mataji came back to where she was staying. Mm -hmm. And suddenly looked at me and she said, Alan Wary, you fell asleep during my public program. <laughs> now, her back was to me. She was looking at the 4,000 people in the grandstand. I was directly behind her. And so I pulled my ears and all the Russians went, oh, you see? And about an hour later, there was a, a message on the intercom, would Alan Wary go and see Sri Mataji? Everybody thought I was going to go and get blasted, you see? But I didn't. But what is, you know, when things happen, you, you have to ask the question, what lesson is Sri Mataji giving me? Well, the answer is that Although I can't physically see you, I'm constantly aware of what you're doing. Now, 20 years later, I was in California. And I went to the house in Calabasas. This is a time of Sri Mataji's silence. I walked into the room. There was maybe 15 or 20 people there. The only seat was a nice, comfortable sofa. Uh, armchair, but if I sat there, my head would be above Sri Mataji's. I didn't feel comfortable. So I went and sat in the corner on the ground. This is a problem for me because when I was 15, I badly damaged my knee playing rugby and it never got better. I really needed a knee replacement, but it meant that I constantly had to shift and move. But I was out of Sri Mataji's line of vision. Now, in the room, there was Sri Mataji completely oblivious to any activity in the room. Sir CP was on her right. One of the leaders of America was sitting by her feet. And there was a lot of activity. Children would come in and sing or dance. People were talking. But Sri Mataji was not reacting to anything or paying any attention. And then at one point, she leaned over and said to this leader something 
I don't know in what language because I don't speak any Indian, Indian languages. I suspect Marathi, but he turned and looked at me and she said, stop fidgeting. Now, my first response was horror. Here's a man in his 60s being told by Adi Shakti as if he was three years of age to stop fidgeting. And what made it worse was this leader guy had no respect for me and there was at all there was complete disdain in his voice the way he said it so that my first response was horror my second response was hey this is the same as in that soccer stadium in Taliate. she's telling you in this room of all these people, when she's not reacting to anything, I'm completely aware of what you're doing, everything about you. Now, what, is a, what a blessing is that? To be in the attention of the Adi Shakti, even for a couple of seconds, is something that most people would never experience. So I took it yet again as a great blessing. And I was indifferent to the opinion of this leader about me in general. No. Amazing. See, when you said earlier about uh, Gregoire, for example, devoting his life to Sahaja Yoga, one might ask the question, well, what else was worthwhile devoting your life to, if not to that? You know, when I first discovered Sahaja Yoga, I thought, you know, maybe I should just drop everything and follow Sri Mataji around the world. Everywhere she goes, I will trail after her. But then I quickly saw you'd be wasting your time because you've got work to do not to follow Sri Mataji. And in any case, she knows everything about you all the time. You know, it was remarkable. She never recognized anybody by their faces. She knew them all by their Kundalini. And she never forgot one person. Not one. True. I have my own uh, relations with her. I'm very fortunate that way, Alan, like you are, Gargar, or many other, other great Sahajogis who have met Sri Mataji. Why I call them great is because they are really fortunate to have been there in, her, in those times uh, in her physical form, though she was a Mahamaya. But uh, I feel today, uh, when I look back, I, it all keeps coming back very, very clear, very vivid memories of being with her. And every time it takes me into another level completely. I mean, you feel her presence when you even think about those times. I, I, I'll, just, I'll just share with you one uh, small narrative. Um, I used to very occasionally write poems and they become a habit of my showing to Sri Mataji what I had written. Now, basically, what I would write is what I was inspired from her speeches, from her talks. So I would used to write it in prose and poetry. So it's as if saying the same thing which Sri Mataji has been talking in her speeches or in her private talks. And Sri Mataji used to be quite enamored by the way I used to put it all in poetry and prose. And uh, she, and I, I didn't know I felt that I have to keep writing. So I wrote. And I kept writing for 20 years. And I wrote, I don't know how many songs, I don't have a count, maybe 100, more than 150 songs. But there was one day in Bombay, my children were small. I was visiting Bombay and I had written a couple of poems and I felt it my right to be with Sri Mataji and, and tell her about the poetry. So in those days I used to contact Yogi Mahajan to get an access to where Shri Mataji was in Bombay and what is the time to go and meet her. 
So here is an incident uh, I would like to share with you. It's coming in my mind right now. That he said Shimadaji will be uh, sitting on the dining table having her lunch. She is at this place in Juhu in Mumbai. You may go and meet her. Uh, he said he was there in the same house. I was speaking to her. So he probably made me hold the line. He probably spoke to Shimadaji and and then he came back and said, Shimataji says, come over. So I went there with both my children, my wife, all four of us. And we saw Shimataji sitting on the dining table. And Shimataji is very lovingly called us all, invited us to eat something with her. She was having her lunch. And we just sort of joined her. And uh, she asked me, how is everything with you? I said, Shimataji, I have just come here to recite a poem to you. You know, I was... <laughs> I don't know. I was so full of telling her what I had written. And she said, sure, sure, go ahead. Why don't you read it out to me? So I was reading out one of my poems. And then she said, just nodding and nodding and just feeling very nice and making me feel that I've done a very good job. And then she said, uh, you know, uh, you have to wait. I have to go and take rest. So would you like to wait? I I'll just take some rest and come. And Shimadaji went inside. Then after about half an hour, uh, either Yogi or somebody came up to us. We were sitting outside only on the sofa. And my wife was saying, I think Shimataji is resting. I think we should all go home. Uh, so I said, fine, I think we can go and we should not disturb her because I have related my poem to her. But then there's somebody who comes out from Shimataji's room, some lady, and she said, she Mataji wants you in her room. And I just looked at my, my wife and my children. And then I said, okay, you wait here. I'm going to go and see Shri Mataji in her room. And then as I entered the room, Shri Mataji was lying down on her bed. And she said, where is your wife? Where are your children? Bring them in. And I went out and called them. They all came. And Shimataji was, was lying on a, on a couch, not even on her own bed. She was, it was a big couch in her bedroom where she was just lying down. And she said to the children and to my wife, she says, please, why don't you, it's afternoon time, you just had lunch, please lie down in this double bed in my room. So they both very hesitating. And she said, please don't hesitate. This is your room. This is your mother with you. And you are at home. So they went and laid down there. And then she asked me to sit close to her forehead on the ground next to the couch. And then she said, you put your this agya finger onto my, uh, onto her forehead bindi, you know, where she used to put the, put the bindi. And I put that and she said, I'm now going to sleep. And she went to sleep and then she started snoring. And I had my finger there for a long time. And then all of a sudden, I started to feel very sleepy. So I just made myself comfortable on the floor, straight down, lying down. And now my head towards Shimadaji's head, my hand up on her, and I also dozed off. And the moment I dozed off, my hand moved. And the minute my hand moved, Shimataji immediately spoke. And she says, keep it back. <laughs> and I just woke up with a jerk. And she says, now turn around to the other side and put your other finger, your other agya finger. And then it went on for, for a long time. Shimataji slept through. And then when, I, when she woke up, and then it was over. I don't know. I must have go, dozed off after that. My hands were away. She didn't say anything. And when I, do, when I woke up, I saw Shimataji sitting. No, she was not in the room. I had completely dozed off. I didn't know what was going on. Shimataji was sitting with, her, with the door of her, of her bedroom open, and it opened into the sea because it was on the sea beach. And then I saw my children running into the water, and my wife running with them. And Shimataji is just sitting there watching them and laughing. 
And the moment I woke up, she said, told me, you dozed off. You must have had a wonderful sleep. I said, Shemadaji, I've never slept like this in my life. She said, see how beautiful this beautiful ocean is and see how lovely your children are. They're laughing and playing and your wife, what a beautiful family scene it is. She's just laughing. And I was just looking at that whole scene with the sun setting. I can't tell you, it was such a beautiful, beautiful evening I've had with Shri Mataji. I can never forget that. I went back taking this experience and then I wrote a poem, which I again told her. And I, I can go on and on like this, you know, Alan, I'm just, it's just coming out of my mind, uh, all these uh, recollections about Shri Mataji, that you just transported, when you, even when I think about that day, I'm totally, I'm out of time. I'm no longer in the time zone at all, which she used to say, you become in a timeless zone. And that she's there with you and all the time I feel her in my heart. I feel so blessed. And, uh, and I, I know one thing uh, she told me many times uh, that you are very pure hearted, clean, neat, nice, nice person. And I, you have a lot of work to do for me. And that's here I am. I'm, I feel I have my own life dedicated to Shemataji's work. If I am doing anything today, it's because of those great memories. And I tell you, Alan, I have innumerable instances. I'm writing a book. I'm writing an e-book and story with all the links of my poems and songs and the times with the Adi Shakti. So I would like you to tell me something so intimate time that you may have with Shri Mataji, the one I described to you. I don't think I've ever spoken about this to anybody, ever. But you inspire me, my friend. And I want you to know uh, that I would like that you say something about something very intimate, a time that you may have ever had in your lifetime with Shri Mataji, and that you'd like to share with people as to how it makes you what you are. Okay, well, um, there was one time I did something that I should not have done. And it turned into quite a Maya. So there was a this guy phoned me up and said, Sri Maharaji, thank you for your letter. And I said, what letter? He said, the letter you sent her. I said, I never sent Sri Maharaji a letter. Well, she says you did. What does the letter say? I didn't read it, he said. I said, well, well I never sent one. So how you can go back and forwards on this. She says you wrote a letter. I never wrote a letter. What did the letter say? She says you have her blessings. So sometime after that, maybe two weeks or so, Sri Maharaji called for the doctors and scientists to come to her house in Ealing. And she asked for me as well. Now, here's something I want to say. I, I, on a couple of occasions, Sri Mataji said to me, you should come and see me. But I'm not going to invite myself to the door of the Adi Shakti. I mean, there's always a long line of people waiting to see her. Well, first of all, I don't need to meet her in person. I know that she can guide me from the other side of the world if necessary. So I never did. So I went to this meeting and I didn't understand the word that was going on. It was explained to me later that Sri Mataji would often sit with doctors and scientists and tell them about things that would be discovered in the next few years by medical science and by science. 
what I didn't understand. So as everyone was leaving the room, she said to me, Alan, would you stay behind, please? So she started saying things, horrible things about this person who wrote the letter. And I'm sitting listening. And I said to her, Sri Maharaji, may I interrupt you, please? She gave me a look of daggers. You know, How dare you interrupt me, was what the look said. So I said, Sri Maharaji, all this is my fault. From begin, I started all of this. And she just gave me a look and a big smile crossed her face. And that's what she wanted to hear. And then we had five minutes or so of her joking and laughing and having a really nice conversation. But you know, I want to say something. There are three groups of yogis. There are people who had a great deal of contact with Sri Maharaji one-on-one. -on -one. There's a second group, people like me, who on occasion, I never counted them, but not very many, had similar experiences. And then there's 99.9999% of yogis who never had any such contact. I always remember Gregoire saying, you know, we're all the rough guys. When a new building is built, there are all these rough stones that provide the foundation, but they're all covered with earth. And the beautiful building that gets on top is the people that follow the yuvas of the future. And we'll mostly be forgotten. Who thinks about the foundations of a beautiful building when they're looking at it? So, I'm not sure the extent to which those who follow will find these things of interest. But I think it's important if we want to if we want to write and we want to record, we should we should definitely do that. Um, but I think we should always bear in mind the perspectives that we're talking about. I always think, you know, in 500 years from now. Who will remember all the nonsense that's going on in Sahaja Yoga now? All the infighting, those in America who support Sahaja meditation, those in America who prefer Sahaja Yoga. What's all that? Will anybody 500 years from now care about that? I suspect not. And that's why I think we should always try to see perspective and we should also always focus on what our job is. So, you know, Lord Krishna said, you have to do the work without regard for the results. But how many people find themselves able to do that? It's quite hard. But, you know, I often think when I'm running, for 29 years I've run public programs. If I were selling pension plans or life insurance, I would have been fired many years ago because the results that I've produced are not very good, you see. They get you thrown out of any commercial organization. But you have you do it and you do your best and you do it without regard for the results. Me too. Me too. And you see, I said this to you before, I think. I'm a natural talker. The Irish are storytellers. But my Russian wife mostly doesn't say very much. But everything that I need to learn in my Sahaj life is staring at, at me across the breakfast table across the lunch table. She's always with me. 
And she almost never criticizes me. She never says, I don't think you should be doing this. I think you should be doing that. And one of the main lessons I learned from her was that the only way you can change another person is through love. Luca, come here. Bring him over. Let me show him to Uncle Sanjay. Look, come, come here. This is my grandson, who's not three. Come and see. Look. Hello, Say hello. Sanjay. Hey, Sanjay. Hello. Hello. Jai Shri Mataji. There you are. Oh, how are you? Very nice to meet you. Very nice to see you too. There we are. Now here's a, I wish you could get a we look at him. But first it's, time in yes. um, we met first oh, time in Taliyachi. Oh, yes, yes, I yes. look at people in Taliyachi in uh, this yes, big house. Yes, I was been there three times. No, but uh, first time when Shimashi didn't come, it was first time when we met. Yeah, when, when there was this program in the stadium. Uh, and there yes. were over 30,000 people, and we were singing all night in Taliyati. I know, I know, I was there, and then we drive uh, by bus, all of us. Yes, you were in the bus? Uh, yeah, of With course. Us? I look after all of you. Yes, I, yes. I was responsible. And how lovely, how lovely. We had such a wonderful time. Yes. Those were miraculous times we had together. Absolutely. T tell Sanjay very quickly about the socks in Moscow. Ah, socks. <laughs> uh, you, you know okay. the story. You, Here's okay. the thing. So the Russians went from Talyati to Moscow and they were going into the room where Sri Mataji was, but they didn't understand the protocols and they didn't know what to do. So they went in to the room. I can't remember this accurately, Ludmila. They went into the room and Sri Maharaji had these socks on, uh, well, nylon socks. Uh, uh, it was preparation for do Sri Maharaji's, for um, our leader Sasha and his wife, and also I was there and another girl. So, we did preparation for Shimata Jisarti in a, in a room, hotel room, and um, uh, we prepare everything. And suddenly, everybody saw Shimata Jis have a socks on his uh, feet, and we don't know who allowed to take off socks from from Shimata Jis. and we cannot do this arty because Shimata Jis having socks. So it just and sudden uh, and I think uh, later we, we just talk to each other and it reminds us uh, everybody thought have this a thought how we can wash Shimataji's feet with socks. So um, uh, suddenly we couldn't put a uh, light lighter on. The, the so. box of matches wouldn't work. Work. They kept on taking new matches out, but the, it, they wouldn't light. So when, all the attention was on the box of matches. But nobody around Shimataji, only we are, and we are in front. So when they turned around after trying to strike the matches, when they look, no socks. the and socks were removed. And mm -hmm. then when Shimataji went to the program, I just uh, stay to look after a room. And uh, I find socks inside of Shimataji's uh, uh, shoes in the bedroom. But Shimataji put them there, and nor did anybody else. But look, here's a here's a little story I want to tell you. Yeah. Uncle Wary that you just saw is nearly three. He is genetically nothing to do with me. His father is Russian. I adopted his father when he was 10. But Luca looks exactly like me. Uh -huh. Sometimes for, in a supermarket, somebody will say to me, wow, you can really see that he's your grandson. But he's not. He's mm -hmm. not genetically connected. 
but his name is mine. And you can see this is about spirit. It's not about biology. So there are all these little jokes that she plays for our amusement and for us to understand. The hardest thing to understand is Mahamaya. I don't understand it. How can you understand that? Even the deities can't understand Mahamaya, but that's the thing that she is. So I, I think that's probably a good point to leave this because any more will just be talk for the sake of talk. Yes, no, that's true. Um, yeah, there is a lot of, um, I don't know, it's, it's nice that we can, we could recollect some of the things of our lives with mother and how we perceive uh, Sahaj Yoga. And it, it's good. There's a lot of people who, when we they hear us, they would probably like to understand what was those times and how we feel about it. Probably gives them a lot of insight to yeah. the whole thing. And it's beautiful. It's wonderful. It's very... Uh, one last question. Um, Ron, there was this gentleman... Uh, uh, Dan Austin, he he wrote this Bible enlightened. My my misfortune, I missed him. Uh, I met him. I do remember his face. I met him many times in the various pujas uh, of, of the 90s when I was around in Europe and the US. But his son, I believe, is a filmmaker. Is um, uh, you had put me on to him. Uh, he's not very conversant. At this moment, uh, he's not in touch, though I have sent him several messages. I'm hoping that we can uh, tie knots with him with uh, our ability of filmmaking here and then his ability of making films there, that we could come up with some synergies uh, where we could work together. I have been in, managed to get his number from um, Andre Haribar. You know Andre from uh, Romania? Andre yeah. and Christine. Christina, who used to look after Shri Mataji, Dr. Christina Haraba. Okay. Andre is a very dedicated yogi from Romania, and he knew the Costans family very well. And he and I are very thick brothers. When I used Canada, he used to look after me for the mm -hmm. three years that I spent here. We will talk about more uh, of uh, my experiences and yours, maybe more at some other time. And uh, I'm only hoping that, uh, just pray for me, that I, I connect with more creative people across the world and we can make some beautiful uh, films on Shri Mataji's life and times and Sahaja Yogis who have dedicated their times of Sahaja Yoga, spreading Sahaja Yoga, giving their part of their lives to more people to understand what it is. People are generally looking, watching Shri Mataji through her videos, her audios, but we are looking at ways and means to show them the real life of people who have followed the footsteps Shri Mataji has, has uh, shown to us that we need to follow, tread that path. Each one of us is a unique Sahaja Yogi and has a unique experience to share. And I think this bouquet of sharing with all the old yogis and the new ones, those who haven't met her also, they have some wonderful experiences that we couldn't even think of at our times. And I think it makes a beautiful bouquet for us to present to the world. And I hope that we can do it more creatively with the way we are working through my foundation, through my NGO. Good. Yeah. Can I make a final comment, please? Yes, yes please, please. Hey. I've published a number of books about Sahaja Yoga. Mm -hmm. um, I was a publisher for more than 40 years. I never understood why would anybody want to read a book when they could listen to one of her talks. I've never understood that. But I did my job that you do your job without regard to results. But here's something that happened. Um, there was a project that came up, which was personally endorsed by Srimadaji. And 
it required us to get accurate transcriptions of all her talks. So this went, this is still going on. And that database is the database from which translations are made into other languages. But Sri Mataji once said to me, you have my permission to edit my talks. And she said, I give you this because I know that uh, written English is not the same as spoken English. And sometimes I make mistakes. I'll give you a couple of examples. Sri Maharaji will say, far-fetched. They live in some far-fetched place. Well, more accurate English would be far off, far away. Far-fetched beyond the imagination. Um, you know, it, it, I like far-fetched. Whenever I hear her say it, my heart always lifts. I like it. It seems appropriate. But for example, she also says that the ancient Greeks called it sacrum, the sacrum bone. Well, sacrum is a Latin word, and she says this in not many talks. The Greeks had a different word for the sacrum bone altogether. So there like, is a, a, an inaccuracy. But it has to be said that out of 3,000 talks, her, the accuracy of her English, for example, is phenomenal, utterly phenomenal. But she said to me, you have my permission to edit my talk. And I thought, this is, this is a minefield. You don't want to go here. But there was one time I thought, you know what? I will. I'll take a, a couple of pages from one of her talks, and I will edit it. And so I did. I, I, I made the English better. So I slept on it. The next day, I looked at what I'd written. I listened to what Sri Maharaj had said again. And you know, to my astonishment, there was a double meaning to what she had said. And my beautiful editing had eliminated the second of the two meanings. Well, I was quite wow. So I left it another day and I slept on it again and I listened to the talk and I looked at what I'd written and there was a third level of meaning which I'd also eliminated. So in what seemed fairly straightforward, I'd managed to eliminate two levels of meaning and leaving just one. So that was the end of my little experiment. And I never again in any way, shape or form tried to edit her works. Jay Sri Mataji. Jay Sri Mataji. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for enlightening us today on this wonderful meeting of ours. I wish you good health and all prosperous times with your family and hope we come back again very soon. Very good. Bye -bye. Ji, to the little one. God bless you. And thank you very much, Alan, for enlightening us with your talk. It's a pleasure. Bye-bye. We Bye -bye. also enjoyed listening to both of you. We were, we've been listening the entire thing and really enjoyed the conversation. Thank you. Thank you, Monica. Alan, Thank you. Thank you, uh, Alan. is a lovely man I've ever met in my life. I'm so glad he's been uh, kind to give us interview. Two of them, rather. Thank you. God bless you, Alan. Jai Shri Mataji. God bless you all. Jai Shri Mataji. Jai Shri Mataji. Jai Shri Mataji. Jai Shri Mataji. Jai Shri Mataji.